As the world celebrates the beginning of a new year with its usual revelry during party season, many will be wondering about the coming year. What does 2019 hold in store for the world? No doubt many will be optimistic and reflect the spirit of Isaiah chapter 56 and verse 12, where we read, Come ye, say they, I will fetch wine, and we will fill ourselves with strong drink and tomorrow shall be as this day, and much more abundant. But is that the truth? Who knows what a day may bring forth? Even more, what a year may bring forth. As we read in James chapter 4, verses 13 to 15, Go to now, ye that say today or tomorrow, we will go into such a city, and continue there a year, and, and buy and sell and get gain, Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? It is even a vapour that appeareth for a little time, and then vanisheth away. For that ye ought to say, If the Lord will, we shall live, and do this or that. The truth is sober, and it is realistic. When we look at the world today, we must seek to look at it as God will see it. We need His viewpoint. That viewpoint is given to us in the Bible, and we have made reference to this in the January issue of the Bible magazine. You'll find it on page 40. Our article is focused upon Britain, but the principles are applicable to many countries, especially those who have known the Bible. The message of the Bible is clear, as we read in Psalm chapter 9, verse 17. The wicked shall be turned into hell. Hebrew, the shield, the grave, and all the nations that forget God. We have quoted this before, and it stands before us with a very clear warning. The passage is applied to many nations, but there can be no doubt that it is a very relevant passage for the people of Britain. It was the influence of the Bible that moved British statesmen to issue the Balfour Declaration and to view with favour the establishment of a national home for the Jewish people in what was then Palestine. But a counter-influence opposed it and withheld recognition for as long as possible. It was that same power that opposed and burnt the Bible, as well as its translator, Britain should repent of its unbelief today. Instead of keeping its promise made through Balfour and the government of that time, Britain courted the Arabs and their leader, the Mufti. The consequences have been terrible ever since, with the slaughter of multitudes of Jewish people, which carries on Hitler's Holocaust, really. The words of William Tyndale, who translated the scriptures into English some 500 years ago, should remind us of a very basic principle. He wrote, Of all the subjects of England this I crave, that they repent. For the cause of evil rulers is the sin of the subjects, as testifieth the scripture. And the cause of false preachers is, that the people have no love unto the truth, saith Paul in First Thessalonians chapter 2. Is it any wonder, then, that Britain's political leaders are trying to take the country into a European trap from which it would be difficult to escape? British leaders ought to know their history, and they should know that the Bible has forewarned them against forming a cosy relationship with European Babylon. How blind they must be! But it may be that Britain will have to crash out of Europe that is, the suggestion being made in some of the media at the present time. This, of course, would bring its own trials, and probably hardship. One way or another, judgment is to be expected. Some commentators are saying that a no-deal Brexit would spark violence, and it is reported that large numbers of extra police are being prepared for this, especially in Northern Ireland. This is what some are expecting in 2019, and time will tell us if this is to be the case. 
There is a prophecy in Ezekiel chapter 28 concerning Tyre, and many have seen parallels between this prophecy and modern Britain. The prophecy is described as a lamentation, and we read, By the multitude of thy merchandise they have filled the midst of thee with violence. Isn't that Britain today? And thou hast sinned. Therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty, and thou hast corrupted thy, corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground, I will lay thee before kings, that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. Therefore will I bring forth a fire from the midst of thee. It shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. All they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. This can be reflected in what we see in Britain today. As violence fills it, and they, there's a fire beginning in the middle of it. Another prophecy, Amos chapter 1, verses 9 and 10, is also applicable. Uh, these are scriptures worth thinking about as we consider Britain's position today. Britain must be humbled, as also indicated in Isaiah chapter 2, verses 12 to 17. As we have said on previous occasions, Britain's exit from Europe, which is certain, is likely to be a very painful process. She must be brought to a repentant state. 2019 could witness the beginning of this. This has been Paul Billington with you with Bible in the News. Join us again next week, God willing.